Hello and welcome back to Alice Goes Sailing. It's a day after the trip back over the channel. And uh, you can see we're sat here. We can actually see, which is nice. And uh, there's East Head just over there. And this is the boat. We've got loads of these uh, flies because it was dead calm earlier. And they just came, landed, because it just rained. And well, they're everywhere. So I've got to wash them off. Nothing too major. There's a spider over there helping me out a bit. And I think some more rain's about to come all throughout today. We just had a dump this morning. We have two leaks. One at the chain plate over there, just where it seals around the deck. It just got a little trickle. Um, and then also the front hatch, absolutely, it's like a sieve. So I put the dinghy over the top of it. That stopped most of it. So it just trickled and dipped down into the front of the boat. So that just needs re-bedding, I think. Um, if not, just another hatch. The main task for today though, will be getting the boat ready to come off of the water because uh, I think I may have found a trailer in uh, Livington for sale. So if I get that one, um, then we might be able to get it out of the water this weekend. And if we're gonna do that this weekend, then I need to be able to bring the mast down um, so I can actually tow it home because otherwise I have to leave it in the boatyard for however long it takes for me to get this mast down. Now, the only thing stopping me from bringing the mast down is all that scaffolding and how it's not attached to the mast. So, the guy um, before me had this. It was transported, the mast was tweaked. It had a brand new mast put on. Um, same original boom though. Um, and he replaced it with wire rigging. Because it was the time of the dreaded lurgy, um, it was cheaper and faster just to put in wire stays to replace the scaffolding, getting that to bolt up. But I'm hoping I can just bolt the scaffolding onto everywhere there. Now we do have the mounting points all there. So you've got two at the front there for the thing it's frame A they call it, which goes to there and the bolt is there. So I should be able to attach there. Then you get frame B, which replaces this up to that point up there, which I've got to see if I can attach that frame on, that's the main one, because it says the most important two frames are frame A and B, because that does most of the work. The other two frames do the last six inches or something, and they kind of mount on that track there. There's like little mounts over there, um, and some other weird one. And the other thing is that block there, I think, is meant to do the line that controls the mast, like the raising and lowering of the mast. And that goes back to the winch over here now. Where is that rope? And two, does it come out of the uh, hole in the bottom there? Or I don't know how it works. So I'm gonna do a bit of research, maybe ask some people who have these boats in America. The trailer itself, it's only got four bunks and then keel rollers, which might not work for this boat. So I'll either have to do some, uh, some custom temporary rigging, like maybe some car tires underneath the main hull. The profile of the hull on the bottom is fairly flat, so I'm, I'm not too worried about that so to speak, so I just don't think keel rollers would do it any good because you don't want like pressure points because it's quite well, a light boat, um, so you don't want to ruin that. I think we should get cracking, undo these, see. I'm gonna try frame A first, maybe take a look at frame B and see what the fittings are because uh, they haven't been fitted in a little while. I even thought some of them looked a bit bent, but I think that's just how they're meant to be. So it'll be interesting to see. I've got some tools on board, only a few though, so we'll see what we can do. Right, I'm just inside the boat and I'm um, looking at the instruction manual. As you can see here, there you go, a nice little diagram. It basically shows the overall system. Also, the original owner had some pictures of how the rig was set up. This is the control line. You can see those mounting points. Also, the boat, the boat looks very nice and clean and brand new there. You've got bubble wrap on the boom, look. And you can see the control lines here. These two poles here are like in two parts, so I have to see how that works. Um, you can see how they attach there. That might work. So you've got lines coming down here. Don't know quite why there's two of them. Um, but then you've got a line that comes out here to a stopper plate, but then it goes to the two lines. So it's quite a weird, interesting setup. So we definitely have enough rope on board, and I know we have that plate. Um, I assume getting the lengths right might be tricky if there isn't rope attached. So 
that might have been an issue. I, I can see the colours of the lines though, so it'd be, I'd be interesting to see if I actually have the ropes on board somewhere. Now it turns out I'm actually missing one of the connecting ends for one of the frames and another is actually a bit bent from the whole mask bending incident from the transportation. Also, I couldn't find the appropriate ropes for the control lines, so that means I can't actually lower the mast by myself. So I will be needing a crane to help me out just so I can get it back home. So the next morning I head over to Northern Marina to get lifted out and onto my new temporary trailer, and you'll see why that is a little later. Um, but we're getting lifted out and the boat's owner's manual actually uh, gives you good instructions and pictures on where the strap should go to lift the boat in just the right spot and then that will let me get it situated on the temporary trailer by adjusting the bunks and positioning it correctly so that it won't cause pressure points on the hull which I really don't want to do. I want to be really careful and make sure it's lined up in the middle because it's quite a wide boat and quite a long boat and it's a little bit heavy but not too bad. Now a big thanks to the marina staff as they were really helpful and careful which made the process very easy and we got Mingale secured safely onto the trailer. So the next thing to do was get the mast off and ready to be transported back home. I finally got Mingale home after a very careful and slow drive back with this massive boat. It's very wide and very long as you can see. I only have about 6 inches on each side and that's after I've knocked the wall down and widened the gate. And I still have to be careful of the swing as I need to make the turn up the drive on a funny little hill too. Um, the temporary trailer is at its limit uh, so it will be getting replaced with something a little bit more substantial very soon. But it did get the job done although the tyres really didn't like getting twisted on a hill with lots of weight on them. It was an epic challenge to get this boat back home in its current state, especially with the size of the thing, and you can tell I'm chuffed with myself. But anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next episode where the boat work starts, and I make a lot of shocking discoveries along the way. So I'll see you on the next one.